Um, we're gonna be speed walking through today's content. Just kidding, we'll go at a normal pace. Um, and today we're talking about uh, making some Walmart Supplier One work for you. So thank you guys for joining us. Today I'll be hosting our content. So I'll be looking at any of our questions um, and behind the scenes, sending resources. My name is Ali Trong. I'm the research manager here at Supplier Wiki. And then guiding us through today's content is Peter Spaulding. So Peter is our senior Supplier Wiki writer. He spends a lot of his time researching, writing, um, and answering questions that suppliers like you have. So glad to have him on today's webinar going through our content. If this is your first Supplier Wiki webinar, welcome. We're excited to have you. Our goal is to make free educational content for suppliers. We do that in a couple different ways. We have webinars like the one that you're on today. We also have free eBooks that you can download, articles, um, just to support supplier success. So if you popped onto this webinar and you haven't looked at anything else, spend some time perusing Supplier Wiki. Um, we'd love to see you at other webinars and looking at other content as well. All right, and for today's agenda, we are going to unpack what Supplier One is. We're going to talk through the main features and as they have developed, kind of what is available for suppliers and what will be coming in the future. And then from the suppliers that we work with and have conversations with, what's the best tips and strategies for navigating Supplier One in the ecosystem that Walmart has uh, for the supplier portal, so within Retail Link. And then in the last 10 minutes, we'll spend some time answering questions and having a discussion uh, with Peter, myself, and everyone who's joined today's webinar. So looking forward to that. All right, and then let's cover a couple FAQs um, that we get during webinars. Will you get a copy of today's slide deck? Yes, we always send a copy of the slide deck in PDF format, as well as a video recording, and that should hit your, your email inbox in about three to four business days. The second question that we get often is what is the best way to ask a question? So there's two ways you can ask questions on Zoom. There's the Q&A tab, and that's actually the easiest way for me to see your question, and it doesn't get lost in the chat. Um, so if you put it there, I'll prioritize those questions for our Q&A section. And then the chat is the best way to engage with the whole group, so share any insights you have on Supplier One or helpful information or other links, so I encourage you to do that. All right, and then last thing that we have here is introducing you to SupplyPike. So we're a part of Supplier Wiki, which is within SupplyPike. And SupplyPike is a platform that helps suppliers get paid and get better with a software that identifies, recovers, prevents deductions, and compliance issues. We do that at a couple different retailers. So today we're talking about Walmart, but we also have solutions for Target, for Amazon, for CVS, for Home Depot, and for Kroger. And the list is continuing to grow um, for our, our particular software. The last thing I'll mention here, again, we're not gonna focus on doing a sales pitch today. We're really just here for informational content, is looking at some of the suppliers we work with. So we work with over 500 suppliers to help them recover revenue loss at retailers. So if you don't see your logo up here today, we'd love to work with you in the future. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Peter to talk about Supplier One. Thank you so much, Ali. Yeah, so uh, today we're going to be covering Supplier One at a um, pretty high level, but with a real practical kind of uh, focus, looking a little bit more on um, what are some practical tools that you can take away uh, to try to uh, make it work for you and and get the most out of it. So a little bit of background on Supplier One um, before we dive into uh, the rest. Basically, it was late last year. Um, Walmart started letting people into kind of like an early adopter program type of situation where suppliers could see what it was all about. Um, this new platform, Supplier One. Uh, so that made some waves, but it wasn't um, it wasn't something that the community of suppliers was really kind of talking about too much. And I think my guess is that there's been sort of a steady kind of increase from basically day one of that early adopter program until now of interest that people have been showing um, in the new program. And especially uh, more recently, certain updates have made supplier one basically an essential for suppliers. So we'll get into that a little bit too. Um, but really, I think from, from the very beginning, Walmart's idea behind Supplier One was to streamline um, some of the siloed retail link apps into a single platform so that they could better do, so that they could have a better 
a universal system of prioritization um, specifically for supplier action. So how can we take all of these things from item management to uh, returns to deductions and, and really kind of just create a, a what, what I've been calling basically triage, but just decision making for system uh, for um, prioritization. Um, what, what should your priorities be given your kind of performance across these different um, not channels exactly, but um, apps, uh, different kinds of um, programs um, for suppliers. So we want to talk about what is the relationship between retail link and, link and supplier one. And this is something that uh, I'll basically be doing throughout the whole webinar. Um, and it's something that I would really like to uh, hear from all of you on as well. What do you think this relationship is? Um, because it's not, um, I guess, 100% uh, clear what the future is um, of supplier one and of retail link. They exist uh, more or less, they coexist peacefully more or less right now. Um, so, um, but yeah, so supplier one uh, basically has some kind of mirrored functionalities um, that are present in those retail link apps that I mentioned on the last slide. Um, but now there's an important update here that we've called out in bold on the left, which is just the item 360. So basically all of your item management, item setup stuff that you were doing in retail link is now going to be happening exclusively in supplier one. So supplier one is not just a mirroring of some of these of some of these functionalities. It is now actually the item management place. So far as I know, and 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 as is the case with a lot of things, a lot of the changes that Walmart makes, Sometimes there are kind of staggered elements to it. The suppliers that we've talked to no longer have access to item 360. So basically what we're talking about is the relationship between Retail Link and, and Supplier One. Um, all item management, to the best of my knowledge, is done through Supplier One now. So it is now an absolutely mandatory, essential um, secondary, secondary platform for suppliers to use for their item management from setup to maintenance um, and everything in between. Um, so... The question that a lot of suppliers have is just sort of, does this mean that Retail Link won't be the main hub and now that there's some kind of transition that's happening to supplier one? And the, yeah, the best of our knowledge is just we have no idea. Um, so um, not totally sure what's going on with supplier one. Is it a is it a long term replacement or not? These are just this is all just kind of conjecture. Um, but there is a lot more that you can do in supplier one than just item management. Just like in retail link, there's a lot more that you could have done um, aside from just item management. So um, basically, you know, and we have a we have a lot of resources on retail link, um, and we have some other resources on supplier one as well that um, Ali can share with you guys. Um, but for the most part, um, retail link is still the main hub. It's still the it's still the the current supplier platform um, of most importance to um, to suppliers now. Uh, aside from item 360 going away, there's some other kind of notable changes that I would like to call out as well that DSS, which was the basically, you know, the supplier performance um, uh, reports app that was in Retail Link has also now been moved out, not into supplier one, but by Luminate. Luminate has completely kind of taken over that. So, and that's another that's another secondary platform. I'm calling these secondary platforms, but it's really just kind of a separate website. Um, still connected to Walmart, obviously, and still intimately, um, uh, uh, still an intimate part of the universal supplier performance uh, experience, I guess, or business. Um, so, so that's another kind of call out. Retail Link has lost two apps, two of their biggest and most important apps for supplier supplier performance, and they've been replacing them with other things. One of those um, being a supplier one functionality another of those being a completely new program in Luminate. So, of course, I mean, we talk about Luminate constantly. So if you're curious about Luminate, if if you have never heard the word Luminate before somehow, um, we've got a lot on that as well. Highly recommend um, dipping your toes into some of that content and really uh, exploring the Walmart supplier support group, Facebook group, if you're not familiar with that. That honestly, at this point, is the best place to go for Luminate help. Um, just because the the feedback uh, from from Walmart might be a little slow in coming back, our information is just as new and 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 underdeveloped as everyone else's. In that Walmart supplier support group, everyone can come together and share resources. So 
highly recommend that. Um, and speaking of, I just want to kind of know if anyone uh, wants to, of course, share in the chat what your experience with Supplier One has been. If you've been in, if you haven't been in, that's good um, to know too, just um, what your experience with that has been. Um, what was the user experience like? Do you prefer it to the old item 360? Um, or is that not really your your wheelhouse and you're really just here to kind of learn what item three, uh, what um, supplier one is about? Um, but definitely let us know. Um, similarly to Luminate, the supplier one login is just the same as Retail Link and it will have the same MFA process. So basically now Retail Link, supplier one, Luminate, you're all using the same uh, credentials to get into those um, uh, across the board. But yeah, let us know in the chat what your experience has been like if you've been in Supplier One. If you haven't been in yet, let us know that too. Um, that's all really helpful information. And of course, as is the case with Luminate, the Walmart Supplier Support Group on Facebook is really helpful um, for sharing that information and for asking questions. There's a lot of really helpful conversations that are going on there. It's good just for research too. Uh, uh, Linda in the chat says she's just uh, learning to use it and it seems a little redundant so far. And yeah, we'll be getting into a lot of the redundancies as well. And or uh, redundancy has kind of a negative connotation. Uh, we've been using the word mirroring, right, which is, I think, more neutral. Um, but yeah, in terms of Nova, uh, in terms of uh, the, the PO functionality, in terms of the deductions functionality, a lot of it is just kind of mirroring a lot of what already exists there. Uh, <laughs> um, Debbie says uh, she's been using Supplier One for a while. She likes it better than Item 360. Uh, I have set up items in Supplier One also. So that's uh, some interesting feedback as well. So maybe some of the some of the UX is a little bit smoother in Supplier One. Maybe that would explain a little bit of the uh, rationale behind that transition as well. Um, but thanks for sharing, guys. Uh, really helpful information. Similar, I've, I've heard similar feedback with Illuminate in that um, the transition is has been really difficult from DSS to Illuminate. They, the, all of the reports are different. They have different names, different business elements, um, but that there is an extent to which the user experience or the actual kind of like website of it <clears throat> is better in some ways. So, um, but yeah, curious, you know, change is hard, <laughs> uh, especially when it comes to really important um, apps like DSS and Item360. Um, but yeah, really helpful. So this is a little bit, uh, I've covered this a little bit already, but I just want to make sure we kind of gloss over it one more time. Um, Walmart's official position in the Supplier One trainings is that the functionality of these apps is not going to be replaced by Supplier One. So basically you have Nova, um, APITS, APDP, and item 360, um, there may be another now, I'm not sure, um, but some of just kind of the most important retail link apps, that functionality is all kind of um, funneled down into supplier one. And then they look across all of those platforms to sort of make a list of priorities for you that they put in the dashboard. So that's basically supplier one in a nutshell, uh, which we'll be looking at a little bit more of what that looks like in a bit. Um, <clears throat> and, and yeah, so Walmart's official position is like, no, this isn't a long-term replacement of Retail Link um, or of these apps even. Um, I think of it a little bit more as a as an experiment. Luminate is not an experiment. Luminate is, is Walmart saying, we're done with DSS. It was such an old um, app. We needed to start over. We needed to get better omni-channel insights and stuff like that, right? So Luminate is not that. Um, supplier 1 doesn't seem to be as big of a sea change uh, for suppliers yet. But again, item 360 going away seems to kind of um, be a harbinger of something, right? Like, what is what does that mean? You know, um, Nova and ABDP are relatively new apps in Retail Link that Walmart spent a ton of time building out. So would they just kind of two years later give them up for Supplier One? I don't know, right? So just just some food for thought. Um, it's no, it's not time to put on your tinfoil hats uh, yet. Um, but yeah, that's. That's sort of the way that we've been um, that we've been thinking about it. Um, so, what are Supplier One's main features? Let me just pause here real quick. And so sorry, I'm not sure what you guys can see or not, but they changed my view halfway through this presentation. Okay, 
Spider-Man's main features, I'm going to kind of run through this pretty quickly. We've covered this in other webinars. You've covered this in other content. And there's a lot out there that you can kind of learn about what this is. Um, <clears throat> uh, we've got another question there for the chat. Um, if any of you um, would like for us to cover in depth one of these areas, we've done a little bit on the items and inventory stuff already because, again, item 360 went away. So that's something we felt like we needed to cover. Um, and we have some stuff on Nova already. And of course, we have a ton of, of content on APDP. So um, all of that is out there already. But if you'd like to learn a little bit more about the claims and return scorecard, um, what that's like, um, how to get the most out of that. Um, definitely let us know that as well. But basically, we've got these four main uh, features or functionalities um, that are each kind of mirrors of something in Retail Link as well, except for items and in inventory, uh, which is a replacement of item 360. So order management is your duplication of Nova. Your That's where all of your PO stuff will go. All of the order um, uh, edits and, and changes and stuff like that will be happening there. The claims and return scorecard, uh, is pretty self-explanatory. That's your returns reporting. Returns reporting in Retail Link, I know very little about. I'm not sure what the name of that app is, where all that happens, but um, I don't think we've covered um, it, at least not recently um, on Supplier Wiki, um, but that's where all of that is happening. Basically, basically, the idea is you don't want to see really unusual or high volumes of returns for any of your items or in any particular region or something like that, right? So same idea with the other sort of kinds of uh, scorecards and reporting, um, but for your claims and returns and then payments and charges, right? So um, uh, that's where your deductions info um, and stuff will live as well. Okay, Linda's feedback is yes, claims and returns need more info on that one, please. So that's really helpful for me to know. I would, it's something I would just like to learn about because I it's I haven't covered it hardly at all in my time here at Supplier Wiki, and it seems really fascinating. Um, so that's great feedback. All right. Yes. This is a helpful graphic that um one of our uh, content coordinators worked on here a little bit. It's it's helpful just for sort of integrating showing what this this mirroring or this double functionality um, or redundancy is uh, and how it applies from item 360 or how it translates from item 360 to supplier one. So unlike the transition from DSS to Luminate, this one is pretty similar, right? So you see a lot of those same headings just moved around a little bit. Um, uh, the transition from DSS to Luminate is basically um, like two different languages all of the reports are different. So people are constantly, people uh, are constantly confused about, well, how do I run this report in Luminate? There is a way to do it. It probably just has a slightly different name. So um, yeah, going to as many of those trainings as you can would be great. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the um, design behind supplier one is just very similar to the apps that uh, it's copying, but you can see it's moved around there a little bit. So your activity manager is now called submission manager, um, but maintenance setup and catalog all have the same names. And then they've just um, been reordered a little bit. Uh, another call out too, is that the supplier one home has a lot of item information in it. This might be because right now supplier one is just sort of prioritizing item setup and item inventory and item maintenance. Um, uh, uh, for their suppliers, that's like the main kind of um, push, uh, more so than your performance, your demand and forecasts and apps and integrations and, and order management or whatever, right? Um, so <clears throat> that's uh, something that's worth kind of paying attention to. The dashboard of supplier one um, seems to have an items and inventory bias is how I would describe it. Um, and maybe that changes from supplier to supplier, maybe it's different for other people. Um, but it's an interesting thought experiment, too, of just, you know, why is it that um, um, item management has this kind of um, prioritization? Um, maybe it's it's related to the, the most costly kind of supply chain issues. Maybe that's what Walmart's emphasis is trying to be, or maybe that's the explanation. Okay, so order management. <clears throat> uh, this is, yeah, this is the replication of the functionality of Nova, which we have a lot of content on as well. If you want to learn more just about Nova, um, whenever that app first launched, I think it was somewhere around two or three years ago, um, 
uh, we designed a bunch of content around, you know, how to adjust to that too. So, um, but yeah, that's order management um, and it's designed to keep track of orders um, through a variety of filters. And we just call out a few of those here, cancellation requests, um, past due, ship today, new closed orders, et cetera, right? But basically what you're trying to do is uh, stay on top of orders, um, edit the ones that you can't make in time, um, that sort of thing. So here's a little bit of what that dashboard looks like. Um, you've got your order summary um, and the and their statuses all in one place, right? So you've got, um, they'll be um, privileged by active status. Um, and then you could filter by what kind of freight, you could filter by the MABD, by the original MABD, um, and uh, of course, all those other um, filters as well. But basically that high level that they're going to show you is um, from the open, what's that total dollar count? Um, in receiving, what's that dollar count? What's the closed dollar count for that time window? And then what's the canceled one? Um, and then, yeah, for those... Um, uh, for those filters, um, you want to pay attention to that that time frame, that time window as well. All right, items and in inventory. So this is the um, the the main one that um, has uh, recently become more important uh, after item three sixty's um, sunsetting. So this tab is broken down into the uh, four categories that we called out already, um, which is just a slight change from the original and item 360. They start with catalog and then you have setup hub. That's your where you do the item setup, maintenance hub for maintenance, and then submissions manager uh, is in there too. So that's basically your like help, um, your like help and feedback um, area tab, I guess. So um, the catalog, this is um, where you're going to see basically all of the products by GTIN and UPC, um, as well as configurations and hierarchies um, by the win. So it's basically just kind of like your highest level look at all of your items, um, what you have for that one, you know, in order to get the most out of it, you really need to be able to manipulate those filters um, in a variety of ways, which requires training and experimentation as well. So looking into that, I think is really important. Um, setup hub, this is obviously where you do um, the item proposals. Um, you add items, add shippers and mailboxes. Um, so those are e-com uh, items that ship in multiple boxes. You do that there. Maintenance hub, so... Um, if you need to do, if you need to include uh, product content um, or site experience details, item configuration and supply chain, uh, or DSV inventory imagery and rich media, that's where all of that will be done. Maybe you've got new images to add or update, something like that. That's going to all happen in the maintenance hub. And then submissions manager. This is for all of the tickets for uh, all of the submission types. So this could be kind of more like regular help stuff, but um, any maintenance um, submissions or setup submissions, you can look at them all there. Um, and they're organized by uh, usual statuses, whether it's complete supplier action required, Walmart action required. I'm not sure, but I would assume that it auto filters by supplier action um, required just to, um, to bring that to the front of mind because that's kind of the whole supplier one idea. So uh, here's a little look at the catalog. And again, this is all about the filters. This is all about, you know, uh, uh, which uh, filtering by status or available channel or content quality or whatever it is, right? Um, so um, this is a very high level thing. You're only gonna be able to uh, get something out of it if you're familiar with these filters. So again, looking at trainings, if they're available, I would assume through Retail Link, um, or uh, if you can just kind of shadow someone who's had a lot of experience with it or is using it a lot, all of that um, is, is gonna be the most helpful. Um, but you can also uh, pull these reports um, uh, for reporting internally um, with your team or with other people. It can be pretty helpful for that as well. So setup hub, uh, 
broken down really into item proposals, items, shipper and multi-box, which we talked about is the e-commerce, um, uh, uh, sorry, multiple boxes, set up new e-commerce items that ship in multiple boxes. Um, that happens through there. And yeah, let's just a little look there. Maintenance hub is broken down like this. So big ones, I think, to call out imagery and rich media. Of course, as everything's going omni-channel and going .com, this is the stuff that Walmart really wants suppliers to be able to prioritize. And so the, the content score that you get is going to be kind of hinging on a lot of this as well as just sales too, you know, like um, you want to be able to be showing up uh, um, to be scoring high for SEO um, for dot com uh, sales, but you also want to be able to have just quality imagery and rich media to make it engageable for the consumer so that they can set so the, the, the um, consumption experience is just a little bit more um, pain-free. And then you've got your submissions uh, manager. This one appears to be filtered more by submission type than by status. So, but again, all of that you can control yourself. If you wanted to just look at the maintenance submissions, that's what this is, right? Of course, it could be it could be um, filtered automatically by not necessarily submission type or status, but just when the submission was made. So that's important to kind of follow up on too. But yeah, what you don't want to see is a whole bunch of supplier action required there. But again, that'll come in waves, right? Someone will kind of go through it, go through the tickets and, and there will be more work to do. So, but yeah, it looks like these were just submitted and um, yeah, that's that. Again, filtering by submission date, filtering by status, submission type, this will be, and, and all the other filters, this will be the way to really kind of get a sense of how your business is doing. All right, I'm gonna speed this up a bit um, so that we can get to the tips and practices section. So this uh, claims and returns scorecard um, basically is uh, just trying to communicate about the state of returns. You know, How are they doing? Um, what's that looking like? Are there any um, unsavory trends that we're noticing? So it's broken down into general merchandise value, GMV units and return reasons. So uh, GMV is itself broken down into return dollars, GMV return rate, um, both of which are compared with just the previous period, as you would expect. So is there anything unusual that's happening in this window? Units is broken down into return units, units return rate, um, and those are both uh, uh, similarly broken down by comparisons with the previous period, as would also be expected. So some common return reasons. Um, this is basically just to kind of... Um, help suppliers know if there's an issue with the UPC or with the item uh, itself as a product, but changed mind, damaged, does not work, didn't meet expectations, incorrect or missing items, poor quality or other. Uh, I believe that there's just more return reasons as well. Um, other may just be a filler, right? So that creates a lot of manual work in terms of trying to do, trying to understand what's actually going on with the returns. Um, changed mind seems like it's something that is just completely a consumer decision. It's not necessarily the case, right? Obviously that could be affected by the item itself as well. So all of that is just really tricky work, um, that you guys have been doing for a long time, or some of you have probably been doing for a long time. Um, if you're in that returns world at all, um, but this is a little bit of what it looks like. Again, it's broken down by GMV and units. So you can look at that. It's automatically going to have a particular date range and that particular date range compared versus the previous period. Payments and charges. We won't spend a lot of time on this because um, we have a ton of content on deductions and um, and APDP and all of that. But basically, it's uh, it tracks DSV payments to the supplier by supplier ID, distribution center, and report date. Uh, and then it includes some deductions data as well. So that's what's going on there. 
Uh, these reports include a variety of sortable columns, um, and here's some of the kind of big ones. PO number, dis distribution center ID, DC name, date marked as shipped, amount paid to vendor. All of these are really important just depending on what the insights are that you're trying to pull. Um, so again, same, same call out for those filters that can be really important. So for the payment history, you're gonna, uh, you've gotta just walk through that process from su uh, the supplier ID to the distribution center to the report date. And then you can download those reports individually and they look a little bit like this. So you're broken down by amount paid to vendor, date marked as ship, distribution center, distribution center ID, and the purchase order number. The deductions page will look a little bit more like this. Um, so you can look at it by PO number, invoice number, or check number, and then you've got all of these filters here. And this is where it, you know, the, the granularity can get really intense. So we obviously have a deduction solution at SupplyPike um, that we recommend for helping you create these insights for how to avoid these. Certain number of deductions are just going to be inevitable or feel inevitable at least. Um, but yeah, so that's that's that <laughs> really glossed over the deduction section but it's super important uh so but yeah definitely check out some of our apdp content if you have more questions about that all of that should translate to this as well if not more so okay so i talked about the the supplier one dashboard a lot already so we're going to look at it in a little bit more detail here um this is the home tab right and it's really the whole point of supplier one that doesn't necessarily mean that it will be super helpful for you particularly as a supplier you may have other things going on you may have other priorities that you need but this is at least what supplier one has decided is most important for you to fun uh, for you to focus on um right now right so again there's a bias towards items and again i'm calling this a bias i'm not totally sure if that's the correct way to think about it it may be just that item management is successful uh, supplier performance. Like, uh, it may just be, that's the kind of the point of supplier one, two is to, is to break it down in that way. Um, but yeah, you've got a lot, this particular, uh, uh, supplier or fake supplier, whoever this is, is, has a ton in the, in the average category with a score of 70 to 89. And then there's a few items in poor. So again, what do you want to focus on? You don't want to focus on good. It's good enough. Um, you got a ton of items that are average. Um, all of this is important for, you know, getting leverage with Walmart, getting leverage with your buyer, um, if you can improve these numbers over time. So there's also a section a little bit farther down this dashboard called Your Top Tasks. Um, and this one is just a little bit more diverse in terms of which of the four main functionalities it's drawing from. As you see here, we've got some DSV orders um, and uh, some DSV order cancellation requests, and then 19 maintenance submissions that require your action. So that's the supplier action required in the, in the um, I can't remember the name of that subset in the item section, um, but it's the bottom one, right? That's the where all of those um, tickets are submitted, right? Um, but you could just follow that hyperlink and it would probably just take you there anyways. So there's that. Making the most of the filters. Uh, I've been harping on this a lot already, and it's all very self-explanatory. Um, but again, my recommendation personally is to uh, find the time to explore to try to maximize uh, this report polling. Um, I don't know how much flexibility there is or how much uh, basically encouragement there is for you to do that. But in as much as you can, um, I think there's you stand a lot to gain from, again, trying to understand the greater picture that Walmart um, has here in Supplier One. Um, we don't want to put all of our eggs in that basket um, because Walmart doesn't appear to be doing so. But item management is super important, and this is now your hub for that. So it's worth at least in that subset, in that subsection, um, looking in at you know, getting comfortable with those filters if it's not something that, you know, you're already familiar with from item 360 through that redundancy. So, uh, yeah, that's a little bit of a recommendation. Another one is to try the chat, um, try the support page. Um, so ask questions to, to the supplier one chat bot 
This is not a person. Um, and I don't know what kind of success people have had with this or not. I'm really curious what your experience has been. If you want to let us know in our chat, which is not a bot, but real people, um, you could let us know what that's been like. I think that the general supplier experience when it comes to this stuff is to just not ask for help um, because they're pretty slow channels for the most part. So a lot of people will go to the Walmart supplier support group on Facebook. A lot of people will reach out to other people for help, um, maybe their brokers or their buyers or whoever, just depending on what those relationships are like. Um, a lot of people come to us with questions like that. Um, so, but yeah, it's always worth a shot. Um, especially if it's a quick question that you could get out really fast without without spending a lot of time. Um, so it's worth maybe checking out the chat bot. I'm curious. I don't trust Walmart with chat bots. Um, they're not a tech company. Um, but uh, yeah, it could be good. I'm not totally sure what that's like. Manage tickets. This goes without saying, really. Um, submit and review help tickets. Those will be much more manual on Walmart's end. So there's it's more likely to have a human element, whether that's for better or for worse, and then search articles. So supplier one has a pretty extensive and searchable documentation uh, um, uh, set of, of documents for each feature. Um, unlike Luminate, I'm not, a, or I should say, I'm not a big fan of Luminate's help docs. Um, supplier one's help docs do seem to be pretty extensive and pretty rich. So um, uh, watch out for that. All right. And then this is something that we like to call out. Um, it's really important to pay attention to the updates for something like Supplier One and something like Luminate. Luminate has monthly releases. Um, I don't think that that's how Supplier One is working. They'll just kind of update their updates page from time to time. But they do have a little bit of a timeline here, as you can see that there's uh, the available now stuff. So the recent updates, and then there's the more features to come section, which is this is what's in the pipeline. And then there's a whole section here just about retail link. Um, Supplier one is not a replacement for retail link. You will continue using functionality in Nova and Apis at this time. So basically what that means is you can use it for Nova and Apis functionality. Um, but in, there, in this language, and I'm not kidding, this at this time language is all over everything about supplier one. So it does seem to be the case that um, they, this may be an experiment to see, is this something that can work that we could actually, you know, transfer all this stuff over to, um, or not. Right. So, but the emphasis there is really like, you know, there's so much that you need in retail link. Don't try to get comfortable with just using supplier one, obviously. Right. There's so much more stuff that you need to be doing. Um, especially, uh, like pulling reports, uh, I would, uh, illuminate. Um, but yeah, just everything else, like your SQUEP dashboard, for example, um, that's super important to um, to your relationship with Walmart. And that's something that you'll really only find in Retail Link. There's a bunch of other stuff in Retail Link too that you need. So um, uh, that's a really important call out. That is Walmart's official stance. Uh, you will continue using functionality in Nova and Apis at this time. The language there is a little weird because you don't need to if you're using it in Supplier 1 and it's working. Um, but basically, I think the point there is just that um, Walmart is adamant that uh, you should be in Retail Link. That's the main takeaway that I'm getting from that is Retail Link is still super important. Um, so some uh, uh, newer features, and again, this is newer. We probably pulled this a couple months ago, so could be it could be different now. It's always worth um, uh, it's always worth um, looking at. Quick uh, call out um, that I that we just got from the chat. Um, someone has tried to use the chat bot, something they try to do regularly and they haven't had much success with it yet. So, um, uh, th thank you for that call out. That's, uh, uh, helpful too. maybe worth a try every now and then again, when, it, whenever it's just a quick question, um, it's something that I try on a lot of different platforms. Um, and yeah, usually mixed success. You know, we were promised the singularity. We were promised the technological rise. And really, the chatbots, what are they good for? Uh, anyways, so that's that. Available now in Supplier 1. Again, this is just basically the last couple of months. What have they been doing? Um, really, they've been honing in on the homepage um, to, to be able to make that functionality as, as helpful as possible. Uh, the chat bot, our loving, our, our our super helpful chat bot that we that we referred to already uh, for support. 
uh, in-app support and ticket management. So that's that fourth section in, in item management as well. Um, item and inventory management, deduction summary and details, supplier performance scorecard, app store and API connections, order visibility, returns, trends, and charges, supplier profile, and facility management. Basically just kind of walking down the left nav there a little bit. And then for DSV only, you've got payment history and order management updates. And then some features um, that might be coming down the pipeline. APIs for store item setup and PO visibility is really interesting. Uh, I'm not totally sure what that means or what that will look like, um, but wanted to call it out. Intellectual property infringement claims is also fascinating. Not totally sure what that, um, I assume that's more in the kind of item management side of things, but not, not totally sure. And then owned order management updates, I also wanted to call out. Um, the others are, are, are pretty vague. I'm not totally sure what to even make of them. Um, but it seems like, again, this is my just take uh, and uh, so take it with a grain of salt. Just seems like there's an experimentation sort of that's going on here that is pretty exciting. Um, but that isn't that is in no way is necessarily the whole future of the supplier experience in Walmart. Um, in no way is Walmart trying to say um, this is the new thing. Right. But they definitely do seem to be interested in growing supplier one if it's something that works out. So I think we'll pivot now to questions. If anyone has any, you can please get them in the chat or in the Q and a, um, that would be helpful. Yeah. Thank you for walking us through that content, Peter. We do have some questions. Um, and I did do some digging on my side as well. Um, but please chime in. Nicole asks, if you have a task that is instructing you to verify ship points, what does this mean? So Peter, I know you know a little bit about ship points. Um, you wrote our, I believe you wrote our yeah, uh, logistics so. cheat sheet that we have, which I'll send in the chat. But I also found in the help documents on supplier one, an article walking through what that process looks like. So essentially from what I'm gathering, Nicole, you're a collect shipper, um, which means you'll need to set up a ship point in the transportation supply portal app after yes, onboarding. PC 2.0. <laughs> Peter Reppin, the uh, the platform used. It may also have you set it up in Aspen is what I'm seeing. Um, I have heard that there may be some transitionary things happening between that portal and then Aspen. So uh, I would okay, follow sure. what supplier um, one is walking you through. Otherwise, um, we do have a document that I will send here in a second that walks through some of the basics of supply chain at, um, at Walmart specifically. So I'll send that and then I will send the other document that I mentioned from supplier one. And I did wanna just mention, um, I think a question we get a ton when it comes to supplier one is, okay, how am I using this in tandem with other applications? Go in and see if you can do some of the basic tasks that you do in let's say Nova, for instance, in supplier one, playing around with that. Something that we've seen is that particularly the order management doesn't have the same applications as Nova. You can do smaller queries. They're not as um, robust. You can't create POs in supplier one yet. So just constantly checking those um, to see if there are any changes, whether that's looking at what's coming up next or you know checking that application and seeing what functionalities are now in the application as well. So I don't think we have other any, any other questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and transition us into just showing off a couple of our, our resources. Peter can share the slides one more time just to show um, our emails as well. And Sorry, as he's getting I'm that pulled some, up. I'm having some technical difficulties. No worries, no worries. We don't have to pull it up. I'll send our emails in the chat. Um, sorry for the technical difficulties today, y'all. I do not know what's going on. But if you guys do have questions, if you want more content like what we've shared today, 
um, whether that's on supplier one or specific functionalities, we are working on that. Um, we'd love to talk to you guys about the problems that you're having, get those solved for you, or just explore content that's interesting um, for you or your team. So Peter sent his email, I'm sending mine in the chat. Thank you guys for joining today's webinar and we hope to see you at another one.